But I think that if you take more of an interest in it and you learn a little bit more about the science behind it, you can kind of start to tease it apart and see, well, okay, my body's actually telling me something right now. And ultimately, when you do get to that point of figuring out what it is that needs to change, you know, and you start feeling better, like you said, I think you're going to feel your whole body feels better, not just your skin, but I think you'll, you'll feel like, wow, I feel better. <laughs> Welcome to Max Wellness. Today's guest is Dr. Rachel Wilson, PhD. We talk about the literature on the gut-brain axis, the leaky gut syndrome, and the multiple factors that influence it. She also shares her personal journey with psoriasis over the years. Keep in mind that this is not medical advice. This is for information purposes only. Please talk to your medical doctor before attempting anything mentioned in this video. Thank you. Welcome to Max Wellness Podcast. Uh, Dr. Rachel Wilson is with me today. Um, you have, uh, Dr. Wilson, you have your um, PhD in microbiology and cell science. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stumbled upon your content a, a few months ago already. Mm -hmm. uh, you shared your, you share your, your story about psoriasis and also a lot of content in the literature on the gut microbiome and the link with the nervous system, which I found mm -hmm. very interesting, of course, as a chiropractor. Uh, mm -hmm. My field of uh, expertise is really the neuromusculoskeletal system. Uh -huh. And also you talk a lot about the gut brain axis and the gut brain skin axis, uh, providing from your background also a lot of literature that I found very interesting to look at. And um, if you could first uh, tell us a brief history about uh, your whole um, journey in life that brought you to where you are right now. Sure, definitely, yeah. So um, first I'll talk about my education. I got mm -hmm. my, my undergraduate in molecular and cell biology and I went straight from that into grad school in microbiology. And actually my background, my doctoral research is in environmental microbiology. So I was studying microbes in the air um, and clouds and precipitation. And it was really exciting research, but I always had a passion especially towards the end of my, my research, when I was kind of getting a little burnt out, I've always had a passion more so for psoriasis and the gut microbiome, because that's obviously a huge hot topic among microbiologists is the gut microbiome, because it seems to be connected to everything now. But um, yeah, so that's, that's my education. But I actually started with psoriasis back when I was probably 10 or 11 years old. I don't know the exact age, but that was around when I was diagnosed with it. Um, and it was always pretty manageable. I had it on my elbows and my knees and um, it didn't get too bad until my last year of college when it flared horribly. And it was, I mean, everywhere on my body. It was even on my face, you know, it was all my scalp, arms, legs, stomach, and people were always commenting on it. So it was, it was not fun at all. Um, but up until that point, I had been using topical corticosteroids my whole life and it seemed to be able to manage it fine. And then they stopped working in college and actually, at the time, I didn't know what was happening because I had been putting it all over my body in, in much higher doses than I should have been putting it on because no one ever told me not to. Um, and I think what happened was I stopped using it because I just like I was running through tubes of it so fast and I was like, this isn't doing anything. And then I think that that led to topical steroid withdrawal because then it flared really bad. Mm. Um, and so at that point, I was like, OK, well, this stuff isn't working. I'm going to have to figure out something else. And I started reading about it. Um, online. And at that time, I think that that would have been like 10 years ago. I don't know that anyone, I mean, I'm sure people were doing natural treatment of psoriasis, but I think it was kind of like a, oh, okay, you know, sure. But we should be using medication. It was not this. as mainstream as it, is, yeah. as it is today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, but what I, what I came across was this book called Healing Psoriasis Naturally. And I think that the author of that book, that's probably what most people have heard of. I think the author of that book has since uh, passed away. But his book was on how diet and other things that I didn't really care about at the time, but things like your posture and your spine and, you know, some other things like um, mental health and that kind of stuff, how that all related to psoriasis pathogenesis. So I really went hard in on the diet part of it because I was like, okay, this seems like something that I could do and I've always been into health. So I'll go ahead and try and manage it this way. And so after I graduated college, I spent the summer at home with my parents before starting grad school. And I worked really hard at cutting out all the bad things. I cut out gluten, sugar, no alcohol. I was really strict about getting enough sleep and it disappeared. So I had oh. gut tape. I mean, it was everywhere on me and it all disappeared in, in probably about four or five months. Most of it was gone. Um, and it was really awesome. I loved it. But then of course I started grad school and after a couple of years of being in grad school, 
and I'm sure you know, it was very stressful. So uh, it got a lot worse again in grad school. And then um, I really didn't get it to calm down again until I got pregnant uh, last year it was, and um, then it disappeared completely. And then after pregnancy, it flared again really bad. And I think that that's really common with women who have psoriasis. Some people get it during pregnancy, some get it really bad in the postpartum period. So that's when I kind of went all in again on let's get back to this, this diet thing. Let's get back to doing this naturally. Because when I went to the dermatologist, they prescribed me a lot of really strong steroids and I don't want to be on those, especially since I'm breastfeeding. Um, so yeah. And that's, that's when I started the page online on Instagram. Cause I was like, you know, I'm sure other people are going through this. I would love to record my journey and show people how you can actually do this naturally. You don't need to use medications if you don't want to. And that's how I got to where, where I am right now. So now I have an Instagram page and I've documented you know, the journey, the tough parts, and also the the fun parts, you know, when I, uh, when I wake up and I see that it's actually a lot better. Um, yeah. And along the way, I've just been putting up info that I find that I read so that anyone who's following me and has psoriasis can also be up to date on the most recent relevant literature. Um, and it's been really fun. I've actually made a lot of connections with people who have psoriasis and I've learned a lot from them too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's very interesting. And I love how you elaborate on that. And um, what I find very interesting nowadays with the, the, the online, uh, the social media is people are connected on the superficial level, but they, they, they are disconnected more than ever also. And they lack community and what yeah. you provide with your, just sharing your journey. Um, mm -hmm. As we discussed previously uh, before the, the recording, uh, we don't, you know, like it's not medical advice or anything mm -hmm. like that. But then again, you're sharing your journey to just, you know, plant some seeds of other ways are possible and mm -hmm. how in your case you had like some success on some levels um, throughout your journey, basically. And that's uh, very helpful full for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, I I'm curious uh, through your journey, like with your uh, dermatologist, were they open to your uh, like like the, the the food or your diet aspect or all these other uh, ways of uh, helping uh, naturally in a way? Not or... really. Um, okay. So I kind of stopped bringing it up. But the okay. first time I've been to probably I think I want to say six or seven different dermatologists over the years, and I brought it up when I was younger to one, and I brought up leaky gut syndrome too, mm -hmm. um, and the doctor was kind of like, mm, we don't know, you know, there's just not enough evidence for that. And yeah. leaky gut at that point in time, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit more accepted now. I think it's still considered a theory, but the doctor kind of was like, well, we just don't know if there's enough mm -hmm. info about that. And he's like, but here's, here's these things that we do have evidence for. Here's these topical steroids. Those can definitely help you. So, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's no. interesting because, yeah, well, I mean, he was not to totally closed off, but yeah. that's a good answer. Like, we, we mm -hmm. don't know yet. There's not enough evidence. And mm -hmm. that's been true in a way. And I, I still believe, like, from my experience that the leaky gut theory is still um, a theory in a way. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, more and more literature is... Uh, coming out on it and mm -hmm. that's why uh, i was saying it, it wasn't as mainstream like uh, 10 years ago but now it's yeah. getting more and more there i've done a few other podcasts on the gut you know gut brain uh, yeah. access also the gut disc access with the, like low back pain or all these things okay, and it's yeah. uh, getting more and more studied uh, like you say in microbiology uh, like the microbiome is kind of like connected to everything everything <laughs> now yeah. so uh, it's getting very very interesting mm -hmm. and um what would you say uh, the, the current uh, literature or like the current evidence is, uh, although it might remain a theory on the gut uh, brain axis and the uh, leaky gut syndrome? Could yeah, you definitely. elaborate on that a bit? Yeah. So I think I always refer to it as leaky gut. I think that mm -hmm. maybe the more professional term for it now is increased intestinal permeability um, because A, you have to distinguish the fact that our guts are actually leaky. They should be a little bit leaky, right? You know, we need to allow the, the transfer of nutrients across it. So I think increased intestinal permeability is maybe what's gaining a little bit more hold. <laughs> and how would gut. you, um, for our listeners at home, like the non-health practitioners, how would you describe a leaky gut? Right. Okay. So what the research suggests is that there's probably not a great connection in the tight junctions and your gut lining. So keeping the cells together. 
um, the cells of your gut, we have these little like protein complexes called tight junctions, and that's what keeps them together. And what we think is that in leaky gut, there's probably a lot of causes for it. But what we think is that when you have this overgrowth of bad bacteria in your gut, they're secreting these molecules that can cause a lot of damage to those tight junctions and to the lining of your um, intestines. And those aren't the only things. There's probably a lot of other things that can cause it. We think that maybe antibiotics, which can also cause gut dysbiosis, but also like um, different drugs such as NSAIDs. Uh, I definitely abused ibuprofen a lot during grad school, and I think that probably contributed to the exacerbation of psoriasis. But um, yeah, so what we think is happening is that the gut microbes um, of your gut, those are overgrowing the bad ones that we don't want to be growing there. And what's happening is that pieces of them or even maybe sometimes whole bacteria are being transferred from the gut into the surrounding tissues. And then those might be getting into circulation. So circulating through your blood. Um, and what happens in that case, there's, there's a couple different things on bacterial surfaces that will make your immune system go, whoa. Um, one of those is called LPS, it's lipopolysaccharide. And it's this long chain that's attached to the outer, um, the wall of the bacteria. And when it's in your blood, our immune system, our immune cells can see that LPS and they go, okay, this is an infection. And so what happens is your body mounts an immune response. And so you get this systemic inflammation, this low grade inflammation. And it's not necessarily enough. So, so background on that, when that happens in your body and you actually have a really severe infection, you have bacteria circulating in your blood, that can lead to sepsis, which is, I mean, the death rate on that is pretty high. So essentially what happens is you have like the cytokine storm where you just have a bunch of um, inflammatory molecules that are going all over the place. They're wreaking havoc all over the place. And so what we think in psoriasis with leaky gut and potentially with some other autoimmune diseases um, or those that are connected to inflammation is that we have like a low level of this LPS circulating in our blood that's leaking from the gut into the blood. And that's just causing like a low grade chronic inflammation, um, which is the hallmark of psoriasis, right? Psoriasis is an inflammatory disease. So I don't know. I hope I explained that in a way that kind of makes yes. sense. Yes, <laughs> right? it does. Yeah. Um, but there are other molecules too. So we associate LPS with gram negative bacteria, uh, which are like E. coli of the, um, of the gut. But you can also get other types of molecules on gram positive bacteria and other ones. So it might even be that some of the healthy microbes are leaking the circulation. It doesn't necessarily just have to be the bad ones. The problem comes from just the fact that you're allowing these microbes to leak out of the gut and they shouldn't be leaking out of the gut. You know, um, they shouldn't be getting to the surrounding tissues. So, so that's what we think is going on with leaky gut syndrome or increased intestinal permeability. Yeah. So <laughs> that's great. Thank that. you. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very interesting because basically to sum it all up some in a very on a very simple uh level it's really stuff that shouldn't be shouldn't go through goes through mm -hmm. creates exactly. a cascade of inflammation immune reactions uh, out of proportions more than it should and from yes. there it could create all kinds of other stuff related yeah. to those processes yeah and um and th this is what i found very interesting find very interesting also clinically um as a chiropractor i see lots of neuromusculoskeletal cases but mm -hmm. psoriasis is very often associated like you said with it's an inflammatory uh condition mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it's associated with the um psoriatic uh, arth arthritis uh, right. but not necessarily this is a like a, a percentage but many people would come to me with uh, like, let's say joint pain or any aches and pains, any inflammatory related stuff mm -hmm. that would need help as a chiropractor. Uh, but from there, they would have like this psoriasis or skin condition. And then with uh, tweaking a few things here and there, whether it's uh, neurologically by the use of uh, supplements or tweaks in their diets, uh, or that, that we would find that could cause inflammation or uh, working on their gut microbiome using probiotics or any mm -hmm. kind of other things, uh, they would not only get an improvement into their uh, neuromusculoskeletal, neuromusculoskeletal condition, their pain, but they will, would also get a diminish, a, a, a decrease of their uh, psoriasis symptom mm -hmm. and a yeah. very good improvement of their skin. So yeah. the, it's all interrelated. And that's why I find it so fascinating. And I love how um, 
from your background, of course, you provide on your um, Instagram page also like lots of and lots of uh, literature uh, <laughs> to support that. Although it's yeah. not necessarily absolute truth, like science mm -hmm. is uh, forever e evolving. But I, I find mm -hmm. this every uh, very interesting, and it provides. Um, hope or uh, kind of like uh, hints for people to uh, uh, try and maybe help with their inflammation in general, which yeah. ultimately will help with something. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely will. You're so right about that because there's so many different systems affected. And I think that in the next 10 years, we'll probably probably have a lot more solid info on this, hopefully. But yeah, that's kind of giving hope is, is kind of almost a driving force behind the Instagram page because... I think that a lot of people can feel very hopeless, especially if you happen to go to a doctor that tells you, you know, this is genetic, this is a lifelong disease, you're just going to have to deal with it. And that is true. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of going to be something you have to manage your whole life. But I, I think what we don't want to do is have people think this is just how it's going to be forever. Like I'm just going to be covered and because you, you don't have to do, I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. A, there are drugs that can help you get over that. You know, there are some drugs in the market, there's biologics, but B, if you do work on improving your health and all these different little things, that's what I'm trying to put these pieces of information on my Instagram. You know, those things, those do add up. It might take time. It doesn't happen overnight like it would with a drug or a topical steroid. But like you said, if you improve those things, you'll start to see an improvement in your skin. And I think most people see improvements in a lot of other areas. of the Exactly. Country. Yeah. So for me, this, this second time around, really dealing with the psoriasis and getting rid of it this time after pregnancy, what I noticed I had to do, because I was doing diet, I was, I was doing that, I was doing everything right, I was eating healthy, um, and it just wasn't going away. And so I kind of started reading more in the literature. I was like, you know what, I think I really need to focus on just getting like my mental health to an area where it's good and working on like little things that can help regulate my nervous system. And when I started doing that and paying attention to that a little bit more, things just started falling into place. Um, like as an example, because I, I think that in, in talking to other people that they go through this too. So, you know, you're tired. Obviously I have a new baby. I'm tired. I'm not getting enough sleep. And that leads to me just not um, maybe putting all the effort into taking the supplements maybe that I need or always making the best meals. And um, on top of that, you have your mental health that might be kind of suffering if you're not getting enough sleep. So when you start focusing on the mental health, I think that for me, what happened was my sleep started getting a little better. And when my sleep started getting a little bit better, I was able to focus more on like the research and getting the supplements that I needed. And when I started taking the supplements that I needed, um, I started feeling like my gut started feeling better. I started having much higher energy levels. And then I started saying, you know what, I'm going to go for a walk this morning. And then going on morning walks started being a constant thing. And that further, you know what I mean? It's just like this cascade of things where it's like one thing leads to the other. And it doesn't have to be all these changes at once. But I think if you start with the easiest change and kind of go from there, other things fall into place. So for me, getting like getting the mental health back to an area where it was good and um, increasing my energy levels just kind of led to everything else being great. And, and then one day I woke up and I was like, wow, my psoriasis looks a lot better because I kind of stopped focusing on it so much, which I think is another thing that a lot mm -hmm. of people go through. That they, I think a lot of people think I'm not stressed out, but when they look at their skin, they're really stressed out because they're like, I, I don't know what's going on. I can't control it. And that they might not realize it, but that actually contributes to making it a lot worse. Um, or at least we think it does. I know with myself personally, I know with others that it makes it a lot worse. So kind of focusing on those other areas and then not focusing so much on what my skin looks like. And it all just started to kind of fall into place. And like I said, I woke up one day and I was like, oh my goodness, my, my skin looks so much better. And I did a comparison picture to what it looked like a few months ago. And I was like, you know, it's working. <laughs> I haven't well, used steroids or anything. <laughs> that's why I think there's so much value about sharing your own experience. Uh, it's so so much more relatable also. And mm -hmm. although your experience might not be the like, or your solutions might not be the exact same for another individual, because we're all unique. And of course, mm -hmm. there's different kinds of st stressors, but there's still some... Um, some tendencies like the emotional part, like you said, you get this diagnosis and then always oh, genetic. And, but like when we go back to these, um, and I love w w the people who are interested, you can go um, look on her uh, uh, Instagram and uh, content, but this epigenetic part, yeah. which is how like the whole literature around it, but it all boils down to this still the leaky gut and um, gut brain axis mm -hmm. what really uh, triggers all that is inflammation okay mm -hmm. and um, 
what creates inflammation well what in, uh, or what affects the gut brain axis well stress is a yeah. big one so it, you <laughs> yeah. can get thrown into that vicious cycle very quickly mm -hmm. uh and then there's even more literature around that that i saw you uh, post uh mm -hmm. on alex Scythemia also yeah. am i pronouncing no. it well uh, i'm not even that's... sure because it was new to you too I yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just very interesting but you know like uh -huh. uh, like we said it's just uh we're sharing information but it doesn't mean it's the absolute truth it's just mm -hmm. uh you know like to to plant seeds and uh, uh expand horizons on what's yeah. possible and what's out there uh, uh, yeah of the current state of affairs with their literature and the yeah and yeah. also it's not only like the, just to know that it's not necessarily only genes that uh concept of epigenetics how you can you know like silence the bad genes in a way through lifestyle basically mm -hmm. it, it's not only empowering but it's also kind of like it gives hope to people okay? yeah for um, sure and from there to know that it's not necessarily only uh, food, you know, not, not only what you eat, but how much do you sleep? How much mm -hmm. do you move? How too much do you move? Should you rest yeah. more and all those things, you know, and mm -hmm. finding to each and every one to find their balance through that. And mm -hmm. um, like you said, maybe some people who have taken many, many rounds of antibiotics, maybe they need just to recalibrate their gut microbiome with some good probiotics. But then again, yeah. which strain and all those things? Well, <laughs> this is where uh, some health prof professionals who are aware of those aspects and the current li literature can help people to be guided yes. uh, to their individual needs, you know? Yes, so that's definitely. why I find this very interesting, but also like, um, on your uh, personal journey, I'm curious to know, like uh, you've mentioned a few, uh, sleep is a big yes. one, of course, the, the, mm -hmm. the diet, uh, mm -hmm. which is very individual. There, there's some, you know, like common threads, like the, the, the pro-inflammatory foods, uh, mm -hmm. but still you, you talk also about the sun uh, mm -hmm. that, that can help also. And some topicals you say that that can help also. Yeah. Um, could you elaborate on your, your, your personal uh, journey uh, with this? Definitely. Yeah. And I think that this is an important thing because I've now got two examples in my life where I've been able to get rid of the psoriasis without using any type of medications. The first time I was, I was in a much different area of life than I am now. You know, I just graduated, graduated college. The stress wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. um, and really it was the diet changes that helped me. And the second time around, like I said, the diet wasn't really cutting it. It was, it had to, I had to focus a lot more on stress and sleep and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, what I noticed also um, this time around was when it got really bad. Well, first of all, I was given antibiotics and antibiotic drip while I was in the hospital, but it didn't actually get worse after that. It wasn't until like three or four months postpartum when it started to come back and then probably like six, seven months when it got really, really bad. And I think that that kind of corresponded with when I had gotten mastitis um, and I was prescribed antibiotics, I took antibiotics. And now looking back on it, I think that a few weeks later was when I started to get the psoriasis again. So I question, I mean, I think there's a lot of things going on in postpartum. There's hormones that are changing, but I, I do question whether maybe the antibiotics kind of exacerbated it. And at the same time, I wasn't taking probiotics. I wasn't doing a good job of taking my postnatal vitamins. So I was just kind of not really taking care of myself. And I think that all that kind of um, snowballed into the effect of a huge flare. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so for me, what what I found is that you know the stress management, the diet, the supplements, those are all important things. And I kind of wanted to go back to the stress management thing because mm -hmm. a lot of times I see that like when people are trying to help you with with psoriasis, they're saying you know you got to eat this, you got to eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, take this supplement, and those are all good things. They're all good pieces of information, but it always seems like stress management is like a footnote almost like, oh, and don't be stressed. Like, don't stress, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's like, for me, that is like, but that's like at the center of it for me. And I think it's at the center of it for a lot of people, you know? Um, so what I've been trying to do is post things online that kind of show the science behind how stress can really exacerbate psoriasis. I mean, stress, it makes everything worse and everyone has stress, right? I, I don't think that there's anyone who's an adult in this world that's not stressed out. So that's why I think that thing is so central. And I, I think that talking more about that and the connection between stress, your gut microbiome, your nervous system, how all those things kind of coincide and how you actually do have to like, not just saying, yeah, I'm going to manage stress, but like actually actively learning about it and learning about ways that you can regulate your nervous system. 
um, even like going to a chiropractor, I think that those types of things and like deep tissue massages, all those kinds of things can actually really, really help with relieving stress. And uh, I feel like I just totally diverged from the question you asked. <laughs> it, it is perfect. It, it is really perfect. Okay. And it, like you're, you're basically talking about the interconnectedness of mm -hmm. all those things because mm -hmm. the stress is kind of like one big box. Everything gets tr thrown in there because like diet could be stressful to your body, a yes. bad diet in a way. Uh, yeah. But in, the emotional stress is one that's, like you said, thrown like lower your stress levels. Okay. Yeah. As <laughs> if that's how? like the easy, exactly. <laughs> and the people who are mm -hmm. suffering from chronic stress are the ones who don't know how to manage stress, you know? And mm -hmm. that was me for a very long time. I did not know how to manage stress in grad school. I would, um, I would not sleep well. I'd wake up late. I wouldn't eat breakfast. I'd grab a coffee. I'd go into the lab. I would skip breakfast. Most of the time I'd eat like a power bar for lunch or like skip lunch, drink some more coffee, get a horrible migraine by mid afternoon, and then take some ibuprofen all on an empty stomach. You know, I'm not saying that like, that's what everyone does who has psoriasis, but obviously a lifestyle like that contributes to it. Mm -hmm. um, or and, a past lifestyle like that, you know, exactly. It's a, it has a cumulative uh, effect. And at yeah. some point sooner or later, it's gonna, you know, it takes a toll onto your body. You never know when, whenever your body's gonna just shut down and be like, okay, I'm done. And then you yeah. get a flare up of whatever, it, it, if it's psoriasis, but any other inflammatory condition, I find this mm -hmm. very often in the clinic, whether it's like chronic low back pain that without any like apparent trauma, uh, mm -hmm. anything really, at yeah. some point the body kind of like stops compensating and then just breaks yeah. down. And then you're like, how did you're that forced happen? to address well, it. Yeah. <laughs> let me look at your history, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's so funny because I, I don't, like you said, like, I, I think unless I had like started really looking at the psoriasis research and focusing on it more, I don't think I ever would have thought like my past lifestyle was bad that I was hurting myself with, you know, taking ibuprofen on an empty stomach, drinking so much coffee. You, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I was running a ton too. I would come home from the lab and I'd go on really long runs and then I'd make like a healthy dinner. I'd have Brussels sprouts and, you know, I'd tell myself, wow, I'm really healthy. I'm working out. I'm eating the healthy food. But like, I think that I was actually really damaging my, my insides because yeah. I, I just, you know, and I think a lot of people can probably relate to that because you're thinking, nah, and I'm exactly. Young, I'm good. <laughs> but that, that's what I found beautiful about your message also by sharing your journey, but bringing awareness to people about the stressors because most people mm -hmm. just don't know. They, they mm -hmm. just think they're, they're eating healthy or they're, even if there might be a few tweaks here and there, they think that running a, like they, they do a lot and lots of uh, physical exercise, but then again, mm -hmm. you should maybe just be resting more, you yes. know, uh, yeah. burning the, the, the candle by both hands. I don't know if it's a French, uh, proper no, no. translation, yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so this is very common. Like we're like basically sympathetic dominant, uh, mm -hmm. in our modern society. Uh, mm -hmm. it brings us back to chronic stress, wh mm -hmm. whatever the source, uh, combined sources, uh, mm -hmm. and then so by identifying each and every one, because my stressors, we might have some similarities, of course, the right. sleep, I have a baby also and yeah. all those things, <laughs> but uh, our diets might be very different. Our mm -hmm. um, realities or professional realities might be different. Uh, our environments might be very different. What we were exposed to might be very different. So yes. our, of course, past, you know, like you said, your multiple rounds of antibiotics, other mm -hmm. past infections, all these things, different genetics, of course, yeah. uh, it all is individual, but by bringing awareness to people on the areas that they might look into to mm -hmm. not only uh, help their inflammation uh, and like we said, to circle back on that, it's gonna, it might help their psoriasis or other inflammatory condition, their mm -hmm. gut, but since that the gut seems like uh, to be related to everything else, maybe they'll feel better mentally, you know, like the, mm -hmm. the whole uh, brain part, the neurotransmitters, yes. they might just feel less pain in their joints and their muscles. Yeah. They might just feel a better digestion. If that's the only thing, well, it, yeah. everything then stems down from that and uh, people just get better in a way, more healthy, more balanced, less sympathetic, dominant. So yeah. it's worth a try in my book. It is, it is. And that, that brings me back to like the diet and the... Mm -hmm. So I, I'll, I'll post things online and mm -hmm. then like, I mean, there's just so much going on. There's so much interconnectedness that it's like kind of hard to always get the message out because it's like, well, okay, let's talk about the microbiome and how that affects your nervous system, right? Because you're, 
the guts in your mic and the guts in or oh my gosh, the microbes in your gut, they produce molecules that are really important for your nervous system. So they produce, I don't know if it's precursors, I think it's precursors for like serotonin, dopamine, GABA, a couple of really important neurotransmitters that help in the regulation of a lot of things, you know, mm -hmm. things that help with sleeping things that help with happiness, with management of depression, all of that, right? But then there's also the other bi-directional aspect of it where it's like, well, if, if you're stressing and then you have the stress hormones coming out, that's going to wreak havoc on your gut that's going to cause a dysbiosis. So it's like this, just this negative feedback cycle of, or possibly positive feedback cycle. So if you get out of that negative feedback cycle where it's stress, you're making the microbes in your gut unhappy. You're allowing overgrowth of the bad microbes, and then maybe you're causing damage to your gut lining, and then they're leaking into your blood, and then you have this inflammation, right? So stopping that is is important, and then getting back onto the positive feedback loop. Once you get there, though, like it, it's just your body feels so radically different once you get back onto the my my gut is doing better. That helps my brain do better, and then my brain doing better helps my gut do better. I, you know, and I think a lot of people. A lot of people's psoriasis, at least the ones that I've talked to online, are completely unaware of mm -hmm. that connection there, um, especially the connection between your gut and your nervous system. And I, you briefly touched on this, and I have a whole portion of it on my, my page, but potentially early life stressors, so like trauma. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be super traumatic events. This, so the, again, this is there is no research that specifically says childhood trauma or any of these things cause psoriasis later in life. So mm -hmm. I'm linking this to studies that say that early childhood trauma can cause low grade systemic inflammation well into adulthood. Um, and I, I know that there's probably so many studies on this and a lot of people who know this area of research much better than I do. But um, I thought it was kind of important to bring that to light to people who have psoriasis because I think that there can be things, you know, that maybe you just had a stressful, it doesn't have to be a crazy event like you know, you saw a death or the loss of a loved one. It can just be stuff like maybe you had kind of a stressful childhood. Maybe mm -hmm. there was a lot of pressure on you from your parents to do really good in life or, you know, certain things like that. Because when you're a child, your microbiome and your nervous system are developing and they're both very dependent on one another. And the way that they develop, it can be significantly impacted by your experiences early in life. So for a lot of people, I'm wondering if there's that connection between what's happened early on in life. And this can even be things like birth trauma, like maybe maybe there was a traumatic birth and something happened, or even things like prenatal depression, they're saying now can lead to changes in the vagal tone of the baby being born if the mother's vagal tone is not good. You know, I, of course, all very active areas of research, but so things like that and kind of bringing awareness to that. And when I, when I post things like that, I end up getting messages from people yeah. saying, you know, yeah, I'm connecting this. Like I, I actually had a really stressful childhood or I had this really traumatic event. And now that I'm looking back, I think the psoriasis developed not too long after that. Right. So, <laughs> and, and I find this very interesting because as I always say, healing is a journey. And, uh, mm -hmm. as you've seen on your journey also, and then it, like, it's a very human thing I think to do to like, be like, okay, it's all my birth trauma or it's mm -hmm. all my diet or it's all my one thing, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what I find beautiful about, um, such dynamic processes is it's very holistic, you know, yeah. to heal mm -hmm. one symptom is you need to heal the whole body in a way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. many times it's to go back to basics, you know, uh, yeah. like before focusing on like the very minute details, it's really, okay. How, how's your sleep? Yeah. <laughs> how's yeah. your rest? How's your, do you have any quiet time during the day or do you are always, are, are you always sympathetic, dominant and uh, go, go, go. And then when you have a little break, you go for a run or to the gym, doing mm -hmm. some CrossFit and just pushing, <laughs> pushing, pushing. Are you resting at all? You know, mm -hmm. uh, what's your diet like? What's your hydration like? And what's yes. your history? Like you said, like, have you had like a very stressful upbringing or even past career and all those things. And mm -hmm. for, for everyone is going to be different, but it sheds light onto what needs healing or what needs mm -hmm. uh, attention or awareness uh, mm -hmm. to those persons. And that's why just to put all these uh, examples and uh, possibilities out there, it just provides people areas to just uh, contemplate and see, is there anything that needs healing for me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Why not? It, 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 like we said, it might not totally heal your psoriasis like overnight. And mm -hmm. as you, you can uh, 
uh, relate with your journey. It, it, it's uh, an ongoing process. Sometimes you it have flare-ups and still you have some remissions and then mm -hmm. you, you, you're good, but still it's, um, it's a very beautiful process. And it just like, if anything, you're going to feel better. You have, you're going to have better energy. And yeah. then um, all these other areas that are, that psoriasis or any inflammatory conditions, even muscular, uh, musculoskeletal pain, uh, mm -hmm. brings awareness to. So yeah. symptoms are no, no, no. messengers. <laughs> I think so. And I think that, you know, um, I do think that things like topical steroids and biologics can definitely help. And I think that there's mm -hmm. a time and place for them, especially for if sure. like, you have severe psoriasis, because for a lot of people, it's the stress of the psoriasis that that makes it even worse. So when you're, when you're getting something that's making it go away, maybe a little bit quicker than changing your diet or changing your lifestyle, that can actually probably help just get your mental, where you are mentally back to a good place, right? Like you're seeing your skin clearing and things can just start getting better from there. But I definitely do think that there, there's perhaps maybe a place to exert some caution because you don't want to just mask your symptoms and keep going on with being very stressed out in life and maybe not eating very well, you know, and I think that that's something that can happen with long-term usage of some of the medications. Um, I, but I think that if you combine those two together and, you know, while you're seeing your skin get better using a topical steroid or a biologic, you're also working on, you know, improving your diet or uh, doing things like getting moving more, maybe, maybe not moving as much because I know you mentioned this, but CrossFit can, they say now can lead to gut dysbiosis actually. So oh. if you're working out and overstressing, working yourself too much. Um, so yeah, no, 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 I totally agree that that kind of maybe looking at the symptoms and then something else you touched upon was like the layers. And this is something I've been talking about with one of my colleagues and I, I refer to it because my husband always says this, he loves this term, the Lollapalooza effect, <laughs> which is kind of like the perfect storm. And the more reading that I do on this, as a disclaimer, there's not that much research on epigenetics and specifically psoriasis, but there is a lot of research on epigenetics. And what I think is going on, I'm, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough, and I'm sure a lot of people are kind of getting to this point, is that we have all these different genes for psoriasis. Um, one person might have this polymorphic gene that causes psoriasis, while another person might have like five, six, seven, eight of these genes, right? And whether or not they get expressed, that's epigenetics. So you might have all the genes for psoriasis, but perhaps you go on living your life and you never encounter a stressor or enough stressors that actually induce transcription of these genes. So you could be someone who has the genetic predisposition for psoriasis, but you never actually get it in your life, right? And it's, it comes back to this whole layer thing where it's totally dependent on the person. So one person might have a couple genes and maybe they experience a stressor when they're two years old and then they experience another stressor when they're five years old and then another one. And it's just like this perfect storm or Lollapalooza effect of everything getting together and eventually you have this eruption of psoriasis. But it might just be that there was just one too many stressful events. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's these layers and you could be a person who doesn't have any of these psoriasis genes. You experience all the same stressors as someone else and you don't get psoriasis because you don't have the genes for it. Right. Mm. So I think that that comes back to what you were saying about kind of it's very individual. It should be looked at as on an individual basis and kind of examining your whole life history, what, what you've been doing in your life. What was your childhood like adolescence where where are you on stress levels? What's your diet like? Um, sleep, like you said, I think that that's a really basic underrated thing that can help with a lot of different illness. It can even help with managing stress. It does help with managing stress. Yes. Um, but yeah, all those, all those different layers. And so I think that's what I've learned in talking to people online is that like everyone has a different story and, and the things that have led up to them getting psoriasis are radically different from someone else. So that individualized kind of um, I guess it would be individualized medicine if there is such a thing. I don't know if that really exists too much for psoriasis, um, but kind of going down that route, I think people would probably find a lot of benefit from that when you're dealing with psoriasis as opposed to maybe just a blanket medication for, you know, here, take this and you're going to get better. <laughs> exactly. I, that's why I, I, I thought it was a, a, a very great idea to have you and um, to, to speak about this because it's pretty much the same. When I see a patient uh, at the clinic, um, I don't treat psoriasis as a chiropractor, but then again, mm -hmm. it's associated with inflammation. And when we individually assess the person, not only their aches and pains uh, related to inflammation or imbalances, um, 
get better. Sometimes, uh, many times, actually, their, their, their psoriasis or other kinds of inflammation really lowers. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's all related to back to the basics, but to assess the individual's uh, needs. And like yeah. you said, sleep or the sleep uh, depth. Many yeah. people are <laughs> uh, have a sleep depth. Yeah. And then again, sometimes it's just to, to focus on that for a while. And then, like mm -hmm. you said, even through your journey, sometimes you go through, uh, okay, fix your diet and then it becomes very stressful. It might not yes. be the best bang for your buck for this season of your life. And mm -hmm. then so, so to skillfully assess the, the individual or through your, your, your page, sometimes people will read on that and they're going to be like, oh, this really speaks to me. I'm going to yeah, try and uh, find a health professional to, you know, yeah, exactly. To coach me on that or to, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, uh, accompany me on that process. So I yeah. think it's, uh, I love what you do basically. And I, Thank you. <laughs> I, I definitely encourage you to, to keep going, to keep uh, getting the message out there on how mm -hmm. to, uh, how inflammation and the whole gut, uh, brain access, although there's still more literature to, to come out and more, um, understanding to, to come throughout the, the future years. Uh, yeah. we've already seen through the, the past 10 years, how it exploded really. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, I find this very empowering for people to just uh, not only uh, know, like see where in which areas they might lack or need a healing or need a rebalancing, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's empowering to know that you can have, uh, you know, like a, um, an effect on your own health condition, yes. whether it's psoriasis or any inflammatory condition for that matter, because mm -hmm. um, I found it very interesting to speak about your journey on psoriasis, but also this whole gut, um, gut brain and skin access, but also the mm -hmm. brain controls pretty much everything. And then yeah. from there, it can lead to really any kind of condition really. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, it, it's a great message for, uh, for people to take control of their health. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, that's, that's my goal with it. And when I started the page, it was more of like a diary of here's what my psoriasis looks like. And then I found that when I was posting information, like the actual literature on it, people were finding it useful. So I was like, this is helping people. I'm going to keep putting the literature up there. Um, sometimes I probably don't do the best job of explaining it because I'm, I'm taking lots of different areas and putting it on there. And they're obviously not my areas of expertise, like mm -hmm. trauma, nervous system. None of that's my area of expertise, but I'm trying to show some connections between all these different systems. Like you said, in the hopes of maybe, maybe someone will see this and they'll think, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that sounds like that applies to me. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and kind of explore that area a little. Yeah, bit. exactly. And do more research and just yeah. uh, uh, start a new journey, uh, exploring some area. It, mm -hmm. It's about planting seeds, it's expanding horizons, but it, it's we're, we don't pretend to have like the absolute truth ever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's not how science is anyway, or, no. or, or should be, I would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes it, it, it tends to look like that, but um, yeah. And it, if there is one, uh, the biggest takeaway from today's uh, interview, what would you say uh, if there's one thing that you would want listeners to, uh, to go back with, what would it be? So definitely if you are suffering from psoriasis, I think that my advice, the best thing you can do is get more interested in it. I, I know you don't, some people are like, oh, this is horrible. I just, this, I don't want to think about it. But I think that if you if you take more of an interest in it and you learn a little bit more about the science behind it, you can kind of start to tease it apart and see, well, okay, my body's actually telling me something right now. This is perhaps a good thing because I'm getting psoriasis because something's going on inside and that needs to be fixed. That needs to be addressed. You know, it could be that you're not in the greatest place mentally. It could be that you don't have a good diet. It could be a lot of different things. Maybe you're at a very stressful job, but maybe look at the psoriasis as, I don't want to say a blessing because it really stinks when it's all over your body, but look at it as, as your body telling you something's got to change. You know, there's, there's something going on. Let's go ahead and address that. And ultimately when you do get to that point of figuring out what it is that needs to change, you know, and you start feeling better, like you said, I think you're going to feel your whole body feels better, not just your skin, but I think you'll, you'll feel like, wow, I feel better, <laughs> you know, once you start addressing those things. So I guess the biggest takeaway is get interested in it. You know, don't, don't be scared of the disease. Realize that there is hope. It's not, it doesn't have to be that bad for your entire life. There, there is a lot of active research in this area. 
Um, and yeah, look at it, at it as a message from your body saying, we, we got to address something. So let's go ahead and work on that right now. Um, and I think I actually have found that in talking to others who have psoriasis, that learning more about it has actually helped. They've taken more of an active interest in it. And it's kind of become more of like a, almost a science experiment as opposed to like this horrible life sentence, you know, um, that's, that's my takeaway on it. Not everyone's going to feel that way about their, their psoriasis, but yeah, I think that the more you learn about it with this, this disease, the better, because, uh, sometimes I think when you go to the, the dermatologist's office, you might not get like an explanation for what's going on and understandable because they don't have that much time. They can't really sit down with you and talk for hours, but I think that that kind of is on you as a patient to just learn as much as you can about it. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my takeaway. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, uh, really that it's a symptom, uh, of deeper stuff that brings you an opportunity to, mm -hmm. um, see the interrelationships between the multiple systems in your body mm -hmm. and what needs attention in a way. Mm -hmm. And I will add to that as a chiropractor. Sometimes when I see p uh, patients for that happen to have psoriasis, many times, uh, when you dig into their history or even other symptoms, they have other associated stuff. It, it might be yes. brain fog, just fatigue or poor digestion. It could be, mm -hmm. it, there, there's no one recipe, of course. It could mm -hmm. be chronic low back pain. It could be chronic neck pain. It could be headaches. It could be many associated things um, that when you go through a holistic um, assessment or, or a viewpoint, mm -hmm. you can start a journey and sometimes you're going to have a positive and a, like a up and down effect yep. on the, the skin effect itself. But as a chiropractor, mm -hmm. it's many times we see so many improvements on other symptoms yeah. um, that are individual to the patient. So you're not only helping just your, your, your skin, you're helping your whole system many times yeah. by doing these basic uh, things, whether it's uh, putting more emphasis on your sleep, uh, diet, mm -hmm. uh, stress relief techniques, uh, mm -hmm sun, uh, looking at where you might have some environmental toxins or how you right. could improve your general health. So I think it's a beautiful message. And I thank you so much <laughs> uh, for everyone to do that. Yeah, uh, thank I think you. you're providing a lot of value and don't uh, underestimate that. Oh, well, thank um, you so much. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for having been with me today, having this talk, I think is going to provide a lot of value to um, not only to people with psoriasis, but also like just to shed some light on the gut brain axis and yes. the possible skin link also, uh, mm -hmm. but also where can, uh, in conclusion, where, where can people uh, find you? Okay. So all I have right now is the Instagram page. They can mm -hmm. find me on there, but I am putting together a website and eventually cool. I'll link that website to there too. And it's just going to be a, a little bit more organized of um, the literature. So different, different areas with summaries of it and hopefully breaking it down in a way that someone who doesn't have a science background can maybe understand a little bit better. Yeah, that's um, good. So that's coming soon, but cool. yeah, just right now it's just Instagram. <laughs> Perfect. Well, people can uh, follow you on Instagram and uh, be aware on when it comes out. So I highly encourage everyone who's uh, who that, that this discussion resonated with to follow you and uh, to be up to date on uh, your content. I love it personally myself. Thank and you so thank much. Thank you so much for having been uh, with me today. Yeah, thank you. Yes, bye-bye. Have a good day.